Welcome back to another episode of Storycraft Hack. Trying out all the best tips and how-to videos from author tubers you know and love, who I would not be here without. I think craft is the magic of the story and whenever I run into a challenge with, you know, improving my craft, I always turn to the pros and experts on AuthorTube who've been doing this tried and true methods. So I thought, let's take some of those tried and true methods and try them out for myself. So today's story craft hack is using your next must read from your TBR list to improve your writing. This is something that Brittany Wang actually has already put together an incredible video for, and her suggestion is the one we are trying out today. So there are four steps to story craft hack. Number one, what is the tip and why is it important? Number two, what are the rules or industry standards around that tip? Number three, how did our creator friend approach it from their perspective? Number four, how did it go for me trying out their advice? So why is this important? Basically, it is crucial to read as often and as much as you can to improve your writing. And we've heard that said a thousand times by a thousand different people, but is there a more active way without ruining the reading process? I think this tip from Brittany Wang is a great way to break down why a story works, how the pacing has come together, and what decisions the author made along the way. Number two, the rules. It's less rules and more guidelines. It's not really an industry standard thing, but we recommend the Save the Cat beat sheet, the 15 beats that have been made really popular by Jessica Brody's book, Save the Cat. That has been hugely popular in the writer community lately. And that's the one that we recommend. But if you have a different beat sheet or milestone method that you like that has percentages, use that too. Number three, how does Brittany Wang, our creator partner, approach her suggestions? She took the percentages that each of the Save the Cat milestones fall under. Each beat has a percentage of the book that it's recommended that that milestone fall under. If you were to take the total pages of a book you are about to read and divide it up by those percentages, you'll know exactly on what page each beat should fall. For instance, I'm gonna be reading Nick Stone's Jackpot and I'm gonna be analyzing it using this structure. So I know that there are 343 pages and I have marked with a sticky note, the midpoint at 50%, the page number 171. When I come across a sticky note, for example, on page 275, it should be roughly the dark night of the soul. I'll be able to pause, take note. Does this feel structured as though this is now the dark night of the soul? And if it is, that's amazing. And if it's not, you can take notes about why you think that is or how the change improved the pacing of the story, if you think it works shifting it. It's not necessarily about the precision of the page number, but more the rhythm of the story. Brittany Wang has actually been a huge influence to me in my writing journey. I have been following her through the Plotter Life Writers Group her Patreon, I'm a patron, and uh, just using her YouTube videos has been so helpful to me. So please, please give her a follow. Check out her video, which I will link below, because she not only breaks down the beats in a really clear way with those percentages, she also has a cheat sheet for the math. So whatever book you pick up, the spreadsheet's already there for you if you are her patron. So yeah, I will check in back with you guys to tell you how reading your TBR to improve your writing goes. This book is so fun. I have reached the midpoint. I'm really enjoying the pacing, the structure. I flagged for myself, hopefully this isn't backwards. I wanted to check out the voice point of view tense, the narration versus dramatization, and then the technique and structure of the book so far. I'm um, here at the midpoint to see kind of how I feel about how it's been approached. We just got through like, like, like all those sweet little, the, the romance subplot is like right where we want it to be. Um, and I feel like they're definitely getting closer to the original goal of the story, which is to track down a lottery ticket that um, they know is the winner. But the voice is amazing. I, I don't see so much of myself in the main character. She's very, very, a little bit pessimistic and untrusting. I can see the walls that she's built up, 
Nick has built around this main character. And I'm kind of seeing each brick kind of come down a little at a time. The tense is so like consistent, obviously, because it's a fully edited and published book by an incredible author, but the tense is all um, present tense. But there's also something really creative that Nick has done where she does not leave Rico's point of view, except for a few chapters where she will be the main point of view of an inanimate object in another room, for instance. Some side character friends, one of the chapters is from the point of view of the salt shaker at the Waffle House where the two friends are having breakfast. The salt shaker is overhearing what the characters are saying, but we don't have to get in those characters' heads. And <laughs> that's so creative to me because we get to see an outside perspective on things that Rico does not know without having to fully flesh out and commit to a point of view of an entirely different character. That's just so creative, Nick. So creative! I just very loving it, very feel like I'm thankful I flagged the story because I'm not pulling out of the narrative, but I'm still learning more about craft as I read for fun. So, so far this experiment is going great. <laughs> I will check in at another point. I don't know which point, but more to come, only halfway there. Here we are at the end of my experiment with terrible lighting, smudgy makeup, no tears. I didn't cry. This one's not a crier, this one's a laugh out louder, but it's also like a gut punch. All that to say, Operation Learn to Read Like a Writer was a huge success. I'm really thankful that I flagged all my milestones and I felt like although I was a few pages off here and there, I think the every story has its own pacing. Not every story is going to fall exactly in line with the Save the Cat beat sheet or the other story pacing beat sheet of your choice. I remember my heart dropping down into my stomach right on the same page. It was page 257 and I had to move the sticky note over because I couldn't read fast enough and the sticky note was in my way. Nick Stone has done something fantastic here and I wanted to thank Brittany Wang for suggesting this process because I am absolutely going to do this with every book I read moving forward. And yeah, how to read like a writer, story craft hack. Um, thank you for forgiving the smudgy eyes and terrible lighting and straps, tank top straps. Excellent. What should I read next? Drop your comments below. Definitely like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And tell me if you try this and how you think it works. Thanks, everybody.